Your divorce or custody fight has been going on for a while, and you're finally at trial. You get in there, everybody's presenting their evidence, and the other side brings out as an exhibit this big stack of printouts of screenshots of text messages that are between you and the other party. As they're going through, they find an incriminating statement in there, and you look at it and you think, wait a second, I never said that. What's going on? I'm Arizona attorney David Enewilton, and in this video I want to talk to you a little bit about text messages in a family court case in Arizona and how easy it is to fake those text messages. As a preliminary matter, a lot of people want to know, are text messages admissible at all as evidence in your family court proceeding? Everybody wants to admit text messages. It's a good idea generally to communicate with the other side using text messages because yes, they are indeed admissible so long as they're relevant. And that's kind of the key problem that a lot of people face when they're trying to get pick out exhibits to present to the court is a lot of times they want to show a lot of stuff that has zero relevance at all. They just want to show, oh look, there's a bunch of vitriol between the parties, we're fighting, look how horrible this other person is and this person called me names, which probably isn't relevant to property division if the other party's angry at you. It's probably not relevant to the best interests of the child if you're dealing with custody issues. So the, the key piece of the equation in terms of admitting it as evidence is making sure that it's relevant to something. But there are lots of places where it can be relevant if it's saying something that directly impacts the best interests of the child. If you're dealing with something that has to do with an agreement between the parties that can lock somebody in, check out my other video on when agreements are binding between two parties because I talk a little bit about it there. But text message communication is admissible so long as it's relevant. Now within those parameters, it's very important that if you know there's going to be text messages that are, that are being admitted into court, that you check ahead of time. Now, you, by way of the disclosure rules, you should be receiving any anything that could be used as an exhibit prior to going into the hearing. If that's the case, when you get those printouts of text messages, go through, read them, even if there's a lot. And a lot of people like to try to hide stuff in like a massive printout of text messages. I've seen as much as 800 pages of text messages, so it's a pain, but go through and make sure that everything that's in there is stuff that was actually said. Because it is super, super easy to fake text messages and to create text messages that never happened and make it look like they're really there. Now, please keep in mind, I'm not promoting that you should do that. You should not go out and commit <laughs> fraud on the court. You shouldn't be manufacturing evidence. These are bad things. Um, and if you get caught doing this stuff, bad things are going to happen to you. So please don't do that. <laughs> be very, very careful. I'm not telling you this as a how-to guide of how to manipulate evidence. I'm telling you this as a be aware that this kind of thing can happen because there are people that will do this. So next I'm going to show you how easy it is to go through. I'm going to show you on my phone just how you can go about creating a simple text message that never actually happened. So here's our example. First, let's go into my standard text messenger. So you're looking at my, my real phone. And in here, you can see I've got someone labeled as my good friend. There's a phone number here that it's you've actually received a text message here. So it says, hey, bro, how's it going? That's a real text message that's come from this number. But we can jump over to this program here, fake text message. And you can download other ones. But this, this is just one sample. This is an easy to use one. It was free. You can go in here, type in the phone number. Then you can go in and pick when you want this message to have been supposedly sent or received. Let's say came at earlier today. You can pick where exactly, you, how you want it to show, like you sent a message, like it's something that you received. And then you type in what the message is going to say. And then you just hit fake, yes, yes, and that's it. Now if we go back to our actual text messaging app, you can see it's now inserted a text message into the thread I've got. So I could at this point theoretically take a screenshot of what I've got right here, and then I'm off to using my manipulated evidence I could introduce this as some incriminating thing in my court case. 
So as you can see, it's incredibly easy to manufacture text messages. Here again, I'm not saying this as a how-to guide. You should not be going out and manufacturing evidence, but this is being presented as a warning. This is, I want you to understand that it takes very little tech savvy. It takes no money at all. And you can just create evidence that can be printed out and used against you. So it's very important that you check ahead of time to make sure that the text messages that are being introduced as exhibits are accurate. Now, if you know that these exhibits, if you see some exhibits and you're going through and you say, oh my gosh, this is not what was said, make sure that you're generating some sort of evidence to counteract this. And that can be as simple as your testimony, which is not ideal. You want something a little more than that. You wanna be able to show your phone records. Um, that in and of itself doesn't necessarily prove that this is what happened because theoretically, if you had something that was inserted into a conversation, you could go into your phone and just delete it. So at a minimum though, you wanna be able to show your text messages so you can start to controvert what's going on. Another angle that you might be able to take is to go directly to the phone carrier and subpoena their records and get the records from the phone carrier showing here's all the text messages that were sent out. That also creates a small problem, however, in that if you know you're gonna need those phone records, you gotta do it immediately because a lot of the phone carriers will only provide text message records for a very short period of time. So you wanna make sure if you need that, get them right away. But the key point here is if you know that there's evidence that has been somehow manufactured, do something to prepare for it ahead of time. Take some steps to ensure that you can present this case because otherwise if you're sitting in that situation I described at the beginning of this video where you're in trial and you suddenly then realize that those text messages have been manufactured because you didn't look at it beforehand, you're not gonna have a, a way at that point to gather the evidence you need to counteract the evidence that's being presented against you. As always, if you have any questions about this or anything, talk to an attorney, even if it's just to pay that attorney for a few minutes of advice, but get some basic information behind you to try to get some edge so that you're not just walking in blind. You can call us or call any attorney that's licensed in your state and just get some basic help.